Last week I introduced the idea that anything that turns on your hormone insulin is particularly fattening. And what turns on insulin? Carbohydrates. Specifically, carbohydrates that are rapidly digested and rapidly absorbed, causing spikes in your blood sugar. Any carbohydrate that causes a significant rise in your blood sugar is high in glycemic index. One of the sources of high glycemic carbohydrates that you need to be aware of is sugar. Now sugar <coughs> is widely prevalent in our diet. When we were cave people, we used to eat 22 teaspoons of sugar per year. Now, the average American eats 22 teaspoons per day. All right, where'd all that sugar come from? Sugar is added, okay? Most of that added sugar is put into our food, processed food, okay? Uh, it's in your yogurt. Uh, it's obviously in your cookies and candies. It's in uh, things that you wouldn't expect. One third of total added sugars in our diet comes in the form of beverages, sugar-sweetened beverages. This brings me to today's myth, and that is, that it's just an eating problem. In fact, it's not just an eating problem, it's a drinking problem as well. The average can of soda has 10 teaspoons of sugar in it. Okay, 10 teaspoons in the average can of soda. All right, that's 40 grams of sugar. Now, here's a nutritional supplement called Boost. This is something that you can look at the nutrition label. This is something that we provide patients that are malnourished, failing to thrive older individuals that are not eating. Okay? We give this to them so they can gain weight. If you can look and you look at the nutrition label, how much sugar is in that? 41 grams. There you go, 41 grams. That was the point that the amount of carbohydrates in that nutritional supplement intended to make you gain weight is the same amount of carbohydrates in a can of Coke. Sugar sweetened beverages come in a variety of forms, not just soda, but fruit punches, fruit juices, and coffee as well. America doesn't have a coffee addiction so much as a sugar-sweetened beverage addiction infused by the grinds of coffee. Take a look at the example of soda, okay? In 1950, the average American was drinking two soda cans per week, okay, like a weekend treat, all right? 1960, we started tracking health statistics. Obesity, defined as a body mass index over 30, was 13%, okay? By 1980, the average American was drinking one can of soda per day, okay? A daily habit, maybe packed in your lunch. By 1988, obesity had skyrocketed to 23%, all right? By 2000, the average American was drinking one and a half cans of soda per day. And by 2005, obesity was about a third of our population. So over that time period, obesity prevalence tripled. If you look at studies involving soda consumption as it relates to body weight, there is a large population study of nurses called the Nurses Health Study, okay? And we tracked these nurses over time, started doing surveys in 1976, okay? And every four years, they mailed them another survey to update their, their daily habits. Nurses that changed their drinking habits from one can of soda per week to one can of soda per day gained on average 10 pounds in four years. They also doubled their risk of diabetes. Why? What, what's, what's the problem here? It's not just that it's additional calories. Okay, that's what the main take home point I really want to communicate to you. Okay? It's what your body does with those calories. Okay? So sugar sweetened beverages are the ultimate fast food. The problem with drinks is we can down a lot of drink because it doesn't take time and energy to chew through a drink. Alright, so you can pound that away and your body doesn't send a signal to tell you that you're full. Alright? So you have those two things going on which allows us to rapidly put in a lot of liquid calories, okay? And then what does your body do with those liquid calories? Those liquid calories are rapidly absorbed, okay? And that translates into a spike of blood sugar. 
This is the concept of the glycemic index, which I will talk to you uh, in depth on another day. But essentially, when you take in something that causes your blood sugar to rise, your body responds to that. It has a hormonal response to that. Hormones are our chemical messengers. They tell our body to do something. So if your body has a response to taking in sugar and produces more of the hormone, which is insulin, your body is going to have net effect, have more action for whatever insulin does. And it just so happens that insulin causes fattening. Okay, so the more sugar, the higher the glycemic index, the more rapidly it's absorbed, the more spikes your blood sugar, the more insulin, the more fat. So it's not just an eating problem, it's a drinking problem as well. Thanks for tuning in to Weight Loss Myths with Dr. Crisco. To learn more about weight loss myths, check out my website, mythicalweightloss.com. And to learn how you can effectively lose weight and keep the weight off, check out my book, The Ping Pong Diet.